I hope you don't mind our making the television comfort test. No, not at all. Make yourselves right at home. Thank you. Uh, Clyde and I refuse to buy any house unless it makes us feel comfortable while we're watching TV. Oh, this is the most comfortable television house in town. Uh, Mr. Sanders, settle back and relax. Now loosen your tie. <laughs> Take your shoes off, if you like. Well, thank you. I, I think I will. Oh, I hope you decide to buy the house. As long as we're not going to live here any longer, I'd like you to have it. I like it, Clyde. It's such a restful room. <laughs> Would you excuse me a minute? I have a roast in the oven. <sighs> Oh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. I must be in the wrong house. Seven Eleven? That's our number, all right. And this looks like our front porch, too. Well, maybe I've got the wrong street. <laughs> Only one thing to do ask the people who live here what happened to the mulligans. Excuse me, Lebbett. Sanders are here to buy the house. Come on, hold the kitchen. I'll tell you all about it. We're going to sell the house? Mom, why are we selling the house? Well, uh, oh, I almost forgot the cake. Uh, oh, I hope we're not selling the roast, too. Michael, I want to explain to you why we're selling the house. And I don't want any comments until I've finished. All right. Why are we selling it? Uh, you probably don't remember my Aunt Agatha. Uh, she passed away when you were about 13. Aunt Agatha? Aunt Agatha, yeah, I vaguely remember her, Mom. Say, wasn't she one of your favorite aunts or something? Yeah, well, I was talking to Aunt Agatha yesterday, and, uh... You were talking to Aunt Agatha yesterday? We agreed no comments until I finished. It was at a seance. I communicated with Aunt Agatha through a medium, Madame Toledo. Uh -huh. Aunt Agatha always gave me the best advice, and when she told me to sell the house immediately, I couldn't go against her wishes. Uh -huh. Well, sounds kind of fishy to me, Mom. Oh, Michael, if you'd been there and spoken with Aunt Agatha yourself, you... Michael! Just a little nibble. You know your father likes the end cut. Me too. I thought I was in the right house, but when I saw those people in oh, there... Oh, those people, Pop, just came to buy our house. Oh. Buy our house? Now, Joe. Who said we wanted to sell our house? Well, Aunt Agatha gave Mom the advice yeah. to sell the house the other day, and then Aunt Agatha told hey, her that wait she... wait a minute. Your Aunt Agatha passed away ten years ago. I know, and she said not to worry about it. She's fine, and she wanted to know how you are. Wanted to know what? Well, it was at a seance. You, you know, Papa, uh, a... Uh, Seance? Ella Shaw told me about a wonderful medium, Madame Toledo. And she's the one who put me in touch with Aunt Agatha. And Aunt Agatha told me to sell the house immediately for $21,500. Oh, is that so? Will you go right back to that seance and tell Madame Toledo I said she's running a racket? No, oh, wait a minute. We, we don't want to hurt Aunt Agatha's feelings. I'm in the wrong house after all. Excuse me while I go out and come back in again. <laughs> You mean to say your mother's going to sell your house just because she went to a seance and some mysterious voice told her to? Come on, Mick, what is that? I don't know, Freddy. Aunt Agatha was Mom's favorite aunt, and she used to always take her advice. Well, you have to admit, Mickey, it's a little hard to believe. But, Pat, if she wasn't talking to Aunt Agatha, who was she talking to? Maybe she was talking to Julius Caesar. No, no, the lady before Mom was talking to him. <laughs> Mulligan, your mother didn't talk to her Aunt Agatha any more than the lady in front of her talked to Julius Caesar. Pat, you left the intercom on again. Sorry, sir. That's all right, Pat. Tell Mulligan and Devlin to come in here a minute. Yes, sir. You, uh, you wanted to see us, Mr. Brown? Yes, I do want to see you. Yes. Men, I want to warn you. Warn us about what, sir? In dealing with mediums, you must watch your step. Oh, what is it you mean, Mr. Brown? Have you ever been to a seance? A seance? No. 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 Well, I have. Do you know why I never went back? Why? Because they told me to hire you. Well, that's as good a reason as that. <laughs> do you want to know what goes on at a seance? What goes on? Look, all they do is sit around a table, hold hands, and wait for the spirits. And nothing ever happens. Nothing ever happens, Mr. Brown? Nothing. Oh, if that's the case, then my mom's in terrible trouble. Because she's decided to sell our house. And I ought to try and do something to stop her. Well, you certainly should. 
Well, just how, how is a seance conducted? What happens? Would you like to have me demonstrate what goes on at a seance? Would you, Mr. Brown? Certainly. Look, you move the coffee table out into the middle of the room and I'll ask Pat to come in. Thank you, sir. Pat. Yes, sir. Would you come in here a moment, please? Right away. How do you do, miss? My name's Toby Napoleon. Would you be interested in some shoelaces or men's ties? Not today, thank you. Well, then how about some leather belts? Watch bands, wallets, money clips, shoe polish? I'm sorry, I'm very busy. Well, how about the boss? Alligator cufflinks? My boss is in a meeting right now. Pardon. I'll wait. <gasps> Don't be frightened, Pat. Come in, sit down. Mr. Brown, what's this all about? Well, we are about to start a demonstration that will show you that a seance is impossible. It's not very dark in here, Mr. Brown. I, I hope it'll work. It wouldn't work if it were pitch black. Oh. Now, we clasp hands. We clasp hands. Close our eyes. And concentrate on the spirit world. Oh, on the what, sir? On the spirit world. Oh. <laughs> Mulligan. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Let's try to cooperate, shall we? Little catnaps. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I, I don't think I can take it seriously. Of course it's ridiculous, but we're going to go through with it. We'll give it a fair test. <laughs> I just thought of something very funny. What is it? What if, what if the president of the network should come in right now? Boy, would we have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> you have a more sense of humor. Mr. Osborne is in New York 3,000 miles away. There isn't the slightest chance of his walking in on us. Mulligan, lock the corner door. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Now we'll get on with the seance. Mm -hmm. Close our eyes. We'll concentrate. That's right, we'll concentrate. Everybody, concentrate. Yeah, we'll, we'll concentrate. Look, would I you know. please concentrate on keeping quiet? I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> now, according to the books, the table should start to move, and then we should hear from the spirit. <laughs> hmm? See? Nothing happens. I knew it wouldn't. You didn't think we'd really contact a spirit. Of course not. Maybe, Mr. Brown, maybe we didn't concentrate hard enough. Maybe they're hard of hearing. Yeah, why don't you yell at them a little, Mr. Brown? Just kind of give them a yell. All right, all right. Hello out there. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? This is Charles Brown. If there's anyone out there, answer me. I said, answer me. I'm here. <laughs> His voice has changed. You don't suppose we've hooked Julius Caesar? <laughs> you out there. Identify yourself. What is your name? My name's Napoleon. <laughs> I'm not receiving you clearly. Would you mind repeating your name? Napoleon. Beginner's luck, we've hit the jackpot. Mr. Head, have I heard that name before? What have you heard that name before? Why, most famous man in history. He's the reason I flunked it. <laughs> Let's not break the spell. I hope I've proved to all you doubting Thomases that a seance is nothing to be taken lightly. As I predicted all along, we have contacted the spirit world. Wow. Ask him about Josephine. Yeah. Napoleon, are you still out there? Yeah, I'm here. How is Josephine? How did you know about Josephine? It's history. I knew she couldn't keep her mouth shut. That doesn't sound like the Napoleon I flunked in history. <laughs> Napoleon, what is your mission here? I just dropped in to see how you're fixed on shoelaces. Of course. I should have known all along. Pat, what are you doing? Mr. Napoleon, will you come in, please? Gentlemen, may I present Mr. Napoleon, just in from the spirit world, Pomona Branch. Oh. So that's the way you television executives dream up all them ideas for shows, huh? Hey, fellas, let me explain. This is silly. She'll never believe you. 
phone is ringing. Mickey. He's got to do something to get the goods on Madame Toledo. Otherwise, his mother's going to sell the house, Pat. Uh, Madame Toledo, I am writing several books there on the mediums. And I wondered if it would be possible at all to have a little interview with you. <laughs> you don't trust me. But I assure you, Madame, that I have written book of these magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I slipped into my French accent. I don't know why you blew bad enough in German. Sure, you really blew it. Yeah, but we've got to expose Madame Toledo and save the house for Mom and Pop. Oh, Madame Toledo is trying to fleece your mother. She's not interested in any professor. She's just interested in separating people from their money. Hey, Pat's got a point there, Mick. If we can talk her into thinking that we have money and we're not too smart, we'd be in. Neb and Zeb. Yeah, remember the characters we played, the Small Bone Brothers at the Christmas party? Oh, you mean when they booed us off the stage? <laughs> Hello, is this uh, Madame Toledo? Uh, this is Zeb Smallbone speaking, and uh, we have a money problem. <laughs> Toledo's house? Yeah. Boy, look at this around here, Fred. They don't even bother to mow the lawn. Do we have to go to a seance in that house? Of course we do. Come along, Fred. You know, Pop is positive that Madame Toledo is running a racket here, and we've got to find out the facts. We've got to help him a little bit. Who's going to help us if Madame Toledo isn't a fake? Yeah. Sure got to give credit to that Madame Toledo, though, huh? You'd never think it to look at it that this whole setup is a fake, huh? The house is a fake, thunder's a fake, the lightning's a fake. Come on, let's go in. This fake fog is giving me a chill. It's still not too late to change our minds. You now, wait a minute. We're not changing our minds at all. Come on, Frank. Remember this. We've got a job to do, and we're going to do it. And remember also, the minute we walk through that door, we're no longer Mickey and Freddy. But we're two fellas from the backwoods country. The Smallbone Brothers. Zeb and Neb. We don't know nothing from nothing. You got it? Check. Yeah. Uh, we're not supposed to have any, any brains, but we got plenty of money, so try and act a little bit stupid. Do you think we can convince them we're stupid? Oh, do the best we can. R ready, Zeb? Ready. Ready. Yeah. Well, there's nobody home. Let's go. <laughs> Feather? I don't have to show it. I know it's there. Yeah. Oh, he's got to be kidding. Do you have an appointment with Madame Toledo? Uh, that's right. We have uh, an appointment. This is my brother Zeb and I'm Neb and we have an appointment with Mrs. Toledo. <laughs> Guests have arrived, madam. Show them in, Roger. Pardon me, gentlemen. Wonder who decorated this place? Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> you must be the young men who phoned this afternoon for an appointment. The Big Bone Brothers. We and the Small Bone Brothers. <laughs> yes, of course. Forgive me. The... Small bone brothers. Beautiful night, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful night. night. Oh, boy. Shall we take our places for the same? <laughs> oh, we have never tried to find out. Let's keep it that way. Sound effect records are great. I think Madam's got a couple of live ones out there this time. Ten million bucks. With that kind of dough, we don't have to waste our time with that cheap house buying racket. And now, if you are ready, we will hold the seance and summon the spirits. Are you aware of the proper procedure in conducting a seance? Oh, you betcha we know what to do. That's right. 
we all sit around the table with uh, with our hands entwined and uh, with our eyes closed. That's right. And then all of a sudden, a shoelace salesman comes in. Oh, <laughs> Let us proceed with the seance. Let us all join hands. <laughs> Whom do you wish to contact in the spirit world? Well, who do I want to talk to? Grandpa Ed. Grandpa Ed, we ain't uh, talked to him for a long time. That's right. All right. Let us all close our eyes and concentrate. I will go into a trance and attempt to reach Grandpa Ed. I am going into my trance. I am leaving this world and entering the astral plane. Oh. What's with the, uh, the, the mountain and the ground? Oh, disturb the seance. Grandpa Ebb, are you out there? Your grandsons would like a word of advice from you. Speak. Speak. I'm Grandpa Ebb. What do you wish to hear from me? Hey, she must have contacted Grandpa Ebb. It sounds just like him. Don't be silly. That was a name we just made up. What do you wish to know, grandsons? Speak up, Zebariah and Nebuchadnezzar. Who's he talking to? I don't know, maybe, maybe he's got the wrong number. Please hurry, Zeb and Neb. Speak to me, I can't stay long. That's all right, neither can we. <laughs> I know why you contacted me. You want advice on how to dispose of your fortune. But first, let me prove to you that I'm really your Grandpa Ed. I'll tell you your social security number, uh, when your driver's license expires, and... Uh, just a moment, the spirits are calling. Look at the name on this driver's license. Michael Mulligan. These kids are plants. We're in real trouble. Roger, get Madam in here, quick. Grandpa Ed. Come back. Come back, Grandpa Ebb. Yeah, I never did know my social security number. Madam Toledo. Madam Toledo. Madam Toledo. Yeah. What? Where am I? Roger, I told you never to disturb me when I'm in a trance. But this is urgent, Madam. A problem has arisen. Excuse me, gentlemen. I shall be right back. Hey, Mick. Are you sure this is a fake setup? That Grandpa Ebb sure knew an awful lot about us. How could he know our social security numbers when we don't even know him? Look, let's check him just to make sure he's telling the truth, huh? Yeah, we'll find... <laughs> oh, what's going on? So's Merlin. That proves that some, some kind of a racket's being worked here right now. What are you looking for? Wires, wires. Pop told me that sometimes these places were wired with secret... Hey! Look! A microphone! A hidden mic! Is it true what Roger tells me? Take a look at this. Aha! Just as I thought, Fred, there's a wire leading underneath this carpet. I wonder where it goes to. Look, you, you search another part of the room and I'll, I'll find out where it leads to. Check. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, hey, Freddy. It leads right into this room. <laughs> hey, Mick. Mick. Maybe I can, I can find another wire to follow. <laughs> Look what I found, Mick. Huh? This is where Grandpa Ebb's voice came from. You mean out of that speaker? Yeah. Now all we have to do is find Grandpa Ebb. Why, he's just as much a fake as this whole setup is. I'll bet he's hidden right behind that wall now. I've got an idea. Wait a minute. It's locked. It's locked, Fred, but there must be another entrance into that wall. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of those mystery magazines. I'll bet this place is covered with secret panels. Secret panels? Freddy, you're letting your imagination run away with you. No, no, it was the third 50 years ago. Listen to me. <laughs> I tell you, all we... <laughs> Mick. Mick. 
Yo, Mick. Freddy. Freddy. We were stretching our luck too far. You and Irma had to make a million all at once. Never mind the talk. Get over there and get the rest of that stuff. We've got to get out of town quick. You, Mick! Mick, are you in there? You, Mick! Hey, Fred. Keep away from that wall. It's a tricky one. I can hear you, Mick. Speak a little louder. I'm right here. Oh, I can hear you good now, Mick. I'm right beside you. Excuse me, buddy. I'm waiting for the first. Well, where did you come from? I don't know, but you're absolutely right. This house is packed with secret panels. Would you believe it or not, Fred, while you were standing over here looking for the panels, I just backed against this wall. Yeah? Oh, Mick, not again. Why do I always have to explain things to Freddy? Is that the house? Yeah, that's it, Joe. Oh, I hope we're not too late. Why do I let myself get mixed up with your boyfriend's troubles? Here's where I prove to the down of the precinct there's a racket going on here. Joe, isn't that Michael going into the house? Yeah, come on. Stop horsing around, Mick, and come back here. Uh, oh, you're back. Oh, it's beginning to be monotonous. What's the matter, Mick? Oh, I tell you, Fred, I, I don't think I'll be able to stand another trip down that chute. Oh, well, I'll get you a glass of water, Mick. You just relax. <laughs> it's the cops. We'd better go out to the secret panel. Don't anybody leave the house. This is the police. Open that door. Why is it every time somebody comes out of that chute, it's me? Cheer up, pal. I've got something that'll take your mind off of your troubles. for this. Take care of them, Roger. What are we going to do, Mick? I don't know, Fred, but I, I, I sure wish Pop was here. Hold it, everybody. I'm taking over here. Pop! Michael, come over here. Boy, that's, that's service for you. Now watch out for that secret panel. Now you tell me. Mom, what a surprise. Boy, Mr. Brown will be proud of this, huh? I certainly will. Mr. Brown. Gee, looks like everybody's here. Yeah, there's only one person missing. <laughs> you got here. I can't think of a nicer way to come out of a chute. <laughs> well, now that everybody's here, let's have a seance. Peggy <laughs> Rooney will be back in just a moment. Oh, hiya, friends. That was the good word from the folks who bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? And incidentally, no more standing in front of those tricky walls for me. No sirree, I'm playing it safe from now on, right on the ground floor. No more sliding down that chute. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> 